Hi, I want to give you some hints on factoring simple trinomials. And before I begin, let me tell you what I mean by simple, um, as opposed to those more difficult. Well, let's start with this fancy math word, coefficient. Uh, coefficient is one of those really fancy math words that simply means the number out front. That's all it really means. Don't be intimidated by it at all. Coefficient simply means the number out front. So what is the coefficient here for this first term? Well, it's just a 5. The coefficient there is just a 5. The coefficient for this one here, this negative 4p, is just a negative 4. Uh, what if you see something like this, like wm, and there is no number out front. There is no coefficient. Well, if you don't see one, there actually still is a coefficient, and it's an understood 1. Right? It's an understood 1, so you could write it in if you wanted to. So what I mean by a simple trinomial is simply this. A simple trinomial is a trinomial that looks something like this. x squared plus 3x minus 28. That's just an example of one. And as opposed to something like this. 6x squared plus 7x minus 20. Do you notice that for that first trinomial, for this guy right here, do you notice that the leading coefficient, the, remember, fancy word for the number out front, is just a 1 right here for this x squared? Do you see the leading coefficient is really just a 1 right there? Whereas this one has a leading coefficient of 6. So when I say simple trinomials, I'm really talking about any kind, but, but simple ones really talking about simple like this, where the leading coefficient is an understood 1, whether it's written in there or not. Okay, so I gave you an example of a simple trinomial, what I call simple. Um, let's look at um, the hints that I have for you regarding these simple trinomials. Let's see here. Take a look at this one. x squared minus 3x minus 10. And take a look at this one. x squared plus 7x plus 10. Uh, let's see, I have two more I want to show you. Let me slide this down so you can see this a little bit better. Take a look at this one, x squared uh, plus 3x minus 10. And take a look at this one here. I've got x squared minus 7x plus 10. OK. Now, all of these are what I call simple trinomials because, again, the leading coefficient is a 1 for each one of these, right? There's really a number 1 that's sitting in front of each of these x squared terms. OK, well, here's the hint, right? Here's the hint when you're factoring simple trinomials. You know that you're going to end up with two parentheses for each of these here. So I might as well write them in right now. And the big hint that I want to give you is this. I want you to first look at the last term. Look at the last term. In this case, this negative 10. In this case here, it's a positive 10, negative 10, positive 10. And I want your eyes to be drawn towards the sign of the last term. So this last term over here of negative 10, do you see that I, I'm, I'm looking, guys, I'm looking at this thing first. Do you see that that sign, that's what I'm looking at, is the first thing I'm going to look at for each of these trinomials. Whenever you see a plus sign, let's talk about these first, right? Whenever you see a plus sign here at the very end, that is a big hint that the signs inside these two parentheses are going to be the same. That's all this plus sign right here means is that, hey, these two signs are both going to be the same. That's all it means, same. I'm going to write that in there, OK? Well, the question would be then, are they both going to be plus? Or are they both going to be minus? They have to be the same, but are they both going to be plus or both going to be minus? Well, that's when I look over here second. I look here second at the middle stuff, the middle term that's going on. And I say, oh, I see a plus sign. That means they're both automatically going to be plus. If I look here and I see, hey, that's a plus sign, That again, that's the hint that they're going to be the same. Right? This is going to be the same. But if I see a minus sign in, in the second term there, that means they're both going to be minus. So do you see what's going on here with the hint? 
right? And again, look at that last term first. Okay, well, what about these cases? Looking at these last terms first, I see a minus sign for both of them. And whenever that last term is a minus sign, automatically, automatically, one of them's going to be plus and the other one's going to be a minus. They're automatically going to have different signs, okay? Whenever, again, real quick, whenever they're a plus sign, they're going to be the same. Whenever you see a minus sign at the end in the last term, they're going to be different automatically. One of them's plus, minus one's one of the other one's minus. Might as well stick them in right now. Okay, so the last thing we have to figure out then is to figure out these simple trinomials in factoring is let's see what two numbers, right? What two values in this case variables is going to get us to the x squared? Well, x times x will. Might as well stick that in front of each one of these. That's what makes them so simple. All right, so x and x is going to be in the beginning of each of these uh, parentheses. Okay, let's see. What two numbers will multiply to get you 10, but add to get you 7? Oh, that's 2 and 5. All right, and think about that. 2 times 5 will get you to 10. 2 plus 5 will get you to 7. Same thing here. 2 times 5, or negative 2 rather, times a negative 5 will get you to 10, positive 10. And a negative 2 added to a negative 5 will get you that negative 7. Uh, I've got one more thing to show you, but let me just continue here. Let's see, I'm also going to use 2 and 5 to get to 10. But I'm not sure where to put my 2 and where to put my 5. Over here, when the signs are the same, it didn't really matter at all. But when they're different, it does matter where you put the 2 and where you put the 5. Do you see that the middle sign here is a negative? Right For this case right here, it's a negative 3. So between 2 and 5, 5 is the bigger number. That's a big hint for you as well. The bigger number gets the same sign as that middle term. right? Since that was a minus, this is a minus. I'm going to put the 2 here. Whereas in this case, this middle sign is a plus. So the bigger number between 2 and 5, 5 being the bigger number, gets the plus sign. The smaller number gets the other sign. My last thing I want to just tell you real quick here is anytime you're factoring trinomials, whether they're simple or whether they have coefficients out front, always check your answer by foiling. Always check your answer by foiling. It's a great idea, not just on your homework, but for quizzes and tests. Anytime you need to check your answer, you can check it with foil and make sure that you get back to that original trinomial.